All right, here we're going to look at goodwill impairment testing, where the goodwill here has been established. Now it's going to be tested to see if it's been impaired. Now by definition here, goodwill is impaired if the implied fair value of the business unit that we're looking at here is less than the carrying value of the net assets and the existing goodwill for this business unit. Now we can determine the carrying value of the uh, n net assets here and the um, existing goodwill by looking at the balance sheet for this business unit. Now the uh, fair value here uh, will be based on the income that this business unit generates. Okay, to calculate the fair value of this business unit based on the income that it's generating, we have to determine the net present value of the future operating cash flows net of tax for this business unit. So what I've shown here is a projection for the next 10 years of the cash outflows or the investments that we have to make and then the cash inflows that these investments are generating for us for this business unit. And then we have this net cash flow here. Now we discounted this net cash flow back uh, using a discount rate or a rate of return here of 8% that's required for this investment and we discounted them back to the beginning here year zero what they would wor be worth in each case and I also have a growth rate here of 9% for the cash inflows 9% growth rate per year so looking at an example here of how this would work here say we uh, invest in a machine here for $25,000. So we have a cash outflow of $25,000 and then this machine here generates a cash inflow whatever it would be here uh, over the, uh, the next number of years here. Then we take th and look at the uh, net cash flow from this machine here that it's generating and we would discount that net cash flow back to the beginning here of year zero. So if we're looking at say $84,000 here for the end of year one, uh, discounting it back it would be worth 77,000, uh, approximately 77,000 here um, at the beginning of year zero. So now when we sum all these uh, our net present values here for our cash flows, we come up with 886, approximately $886,000. Now that would be the fair value of our unit being, our business unit being tested here based on an 8% rate of return required for this investment. Okay, looking at our balance sheet here. For this impairment test, we'd use the carrying value here for our assets and our liabilities. Now, we may have purchased this business unit here, and at the acquisition date, we used the fair value for our assets and liabilities, for, but for the impairment test, we're going to use the carrying value for our assets and our liabilities. Now, we may have to make some adjustments here uh, to the carrying value here for this impairment test, and that's only to measure any impairment uh, loss here. But those changes here would not be recorded here on the balance sheet. So going through here to determine the fair value of our net assets, uh, we take the total assets here of $950,000 that were uh, determined here and we'd subtract the uh, carrying value here of our liabilities of $130,000. So our net assets here would be $820,000. So we take the net or the fair value or the carrying value here of these net assets of $820,000 and take the existing good well in this case we had an existing goodwill here of a hundred thousand dollars and adding those two together we get the net carrying value plus the goodwill here of nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this business unit okay now we have to determine if the goodwill is impaired so we take the estimated fair value of the uh, unit being tested here of eight hundred eighty six thousand dollars and we compare that the net carrying value plus the existing goodwill here of nine hundred and twenty thousand that we calculated off our balance sheet here and then we can see that this net carrying value plus the existing goodwill exceeds the fair value here of the uh, estimated fair value here by thirty four thousand dollars so that means that the goodwill is impaired now 
a calculate our impairment loss here, we take the estimated fair value of this unit being tested of $886,000 and compare that to the fair value of the net assets here of $820,000. So we have an implied goodwill here of $66,000 since the fair value of the net assets here is less than the estimated fair value here. So we take this implied goodwill here of $66,000 and compare that to the existing goodwill here of $100,000. So you can see the implied goodwill here is less than the existing goodwill here by $34,000. So uh, we have an impairment loss here calculated at $34,000. Now once this goodwill here is written down, it cannot be adjusted any higher. Okay, to record this goodwill loss here, we would uh, reduce our goodwill account here by $34,000. So we start out with $100,000, so our net amount here would be $66,000. And then we'd recognize a loss over here as part of our net income. And that goodwill loss here would be a separate line within the operating section here on income statement, unless it's identified with a discontinued operation. In this case, it would be part of a gain loss here on the disposal. Okay, in summary, we estimated the fair value of this business unit by looking at its income that it's generating and discounting it back here at the required discount rate here for the net cash flows. But if we had we used any other method here to estimate the fair value of the business unit, like looking at uh, the market value approach here where we would compare uh, similar business units in the in within the industry and estimate this business unit's fair value, we would still go through the same calculations here to determine the impairment loss here for this goodwill.